Hey guys, how you doing? Steve Lav here. It is Saturday, Saturday, April 16th, 2016. And I uh, just wanted to do a little video on um, some of the stuff that I picked up from Jim Davis from the National Comfort Institute. I took the combustion analysis course. Uh, you know, and I've been, I've been, you know, working with the Testo 320 for a while, but I was never certified and everything, and I took the uh, combustion analysis course with Jim Davis, and some of the stuff that I learned, and some of the stuff that, you know, I do in the field, and some of the pointers I picked up from him, it was definitely a good course, it was a three-day course, <clears throat> I have talked about it in the past, it was definitely worth the money, it's an expensive course, like almost $900, but I, I do truly recommend that all you guys take it because, you know, I got quite a bit out of it. Um, Jim Davis is a smart dude. Um, he's basically the best guy in the country for combustion analysis. He's been doing it the longest, and uh, he's definitely, um, definitely a character. But he's definitely a smart dude. I, re I respect the guy. Um, I kind of like him. You know, he's... He's definitely, um, you can't say he, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Some of the stuff I want to, you know, talk about that he talked about. The biggest thing that, you know, that I took away from that, well, there's quite a few things, but he doesn't always go by recommended gas pressure. Now, we're all taught, you know, if it's natural gas, you got to run your gas pressure at 3.5. Well, these furnaces and boilers come un- um, undefired from the factory. This is how they're designed. They come undefired from the factory. So if you're running at 3.5, not always, but most of the time, you set your gas pressure at 3.5. Now you put your combustion analysis meter in there. And, um, you know, like a lot of the systems, he says that oxygen should be between 6 and 9. You know, if your oxygen's at 10 or 11, and uh, you're better off to run the oxygen at 6 than you are at 9 if you can. You know, if your temperature rises too high and uh, your stack temperatures start going crazy. This is all things you got to consider when you're doing a combustion analysis. You know, you're looking at your stack temperature. You're looking at your, your temperature split. You're looking at the, what your oxygen is and what it should be, you know, with the door on and everything. And um, I definitely was worth taking that course. It was a three-day. It was a long course. But I definitely, you know, got quite a bit of knowledge out of it. And it's helped me to become a, a better technician, a better mechanic. And, uh, you know, it's an ongoing process. I always say every day is a school day. And it's so true, you know. Um, the industry is changing daily. They come out with new units. And we're all, all of us, we're all, you know, all the guys in the YouTube community, we all bounce things off each another. And we learn from each other. And no one's a super tech out there. You know, nobody's a know-it-all we all we all you know continually learn so a lot of the new guys that watch this you know you're just getting started in the trade learn whatever you can but no, nobody nobody's a know-it-all nobody's a super tech if you've been in business for 30 40 years working you know out in the field you have more knowledge than the guy that's been out in the field for for two years it's just how it is it's just more experience and people can't teach you experience you have to learn it you have to it's like welding you know, the, the guys that have been welding for 40 years, they're better than the guys that have been welding for six months. Why? Experience. Time under the hood. It's same thing with the HVAC, plumbing, heating industry. Uh, the more you do it, the more mistakes you'll make. You won't make that mistake again. It's all experience. And nobody can teach you experience. Don't think anybody, just because you're Nate certified and, you know, you're ready to conquer the world. No. Nate certification is good. But it's not experience. You know, experience is, there's nothing that can replace experience. But that's all, you know, you have to put your time in to get the experience. You have to make mistakes and you have to figure it out and it's it's all part of it. But, um, yeah, the combustion analysis course that I took with Jim Davis, man, uh, I just recently put a furnace in my house and, you know, I... The gas pressure was running at 3.5, and my oxygen was high, you know? It was like 9.5%, so, um, you know, I cranked up the I cranked up the gas pressure to like four, four and a quarter to bring my oxygen down. But with my oxygen down, everything ran better. My stack temperature was still where it needed to be, but it's more efficient that way, you know? Temperature split was okay. It was a little bit on the high side, you know, I think it called for like 55, I think it was running like 60, which I'm good with that because 
you know, um, the plenum temperature was on the low end. It was like 130 instead of 142, so it was fine. You have to take everything into consideration. You got all these parameters that you need to know where you need to be, and you just kind of, you know, pull from here and pull from there, you know, crank this up, crank that down. It's all part of, it's all part of it. So definitely recommend you take the, um, you know, the course with Jim Davis. I've done, I've talked about this before, but, you know, I just wanted to do a little, um, <clears throat> just a little vlog and a lot of these videos are for the new guys and you know guys that do combustion analysis out in the field and a lot of guys that follow me are working men like me you know um so that's why i do these videos if i find something and you know a little bit of information so the thing with jim davis is it doesn't always go by gas pressure 3.5 is a starting point but he don't care about that he'll go to four four and a half five percent he don't care he goes by his combustion analysis meter and another thing that he does that I haven't been doing lately, but I want to start doing it. He puts his meter in before he starts up, you know, during during the run and after the shutdown, which we all should be doing that because if you got a bad gas valve that's leaking by on the shutdown, it'll show up. Uh, you know, and if the bad the gas valve's not shutting down, you pull your combustion analysis meter out before it shuts down. You're not going to notice that. So there's a lot of good things that um. You know, another thing he talks about a lot with it with his draft is um the draft hoods. You know, um take the draft hood out, put a barometric damper in there. I definitely agree with that on certain things. If there's a draft problem, uh, we have to do that because you know all the draft all the uh, gas appliances come now through with um. You know, a draft hood, which separates the chimney from the appliance a draft hood does. Now, a barometric damper is kind of like, you know, you block off that draft hood and you put this barometric damper and you could adjust it to, you know, 1 to 2, 0.02, uh, 0.01% draft, whatever you want. And that's what he pushes. And um, I definitely would do that if there's a problem job. Now, that's another thing with the draft that we need to really think about and check. Combustion air and draft. Uh, if there's a problem with the draft or a combustion problem, make up here, you know, we have to think about that. Not all situations are the same, so. But everything's the same. You have to kind of like, you know what you need to be doing and get a feel for what's going on in the situation. Now, if there's a draft problem, obviously, if there's a draft problem, it's not going to pull the air through the unit to, to get the proper combustion air. So then if that's the problem, you know, you'll get high CO, high CO levels. And that's another thing, you know, I've seen a lot of gas boilers soot, gas boilers and uh, furnaces soot up. And uh, a lot of people say, oh, gas gas never soots up. Oh, yeah, it does. If there's a if there's a dry problem or dirty burners and they never clean it, you know, well, yeah, it can soot up. Oh, the pressure's not proper. There's different things that can cause it to soot up. But that's another thing that I learned is... Um, you know about the chimneys and stuff like that that you know birds nest and all this stuff that could happen and uh it was definitely a good course i recommend uh i recommend you guys take it um it was a, it was a good experience for me and uh the long you know it's been, it's been a while since i went months and i keep thinking back at it and uh, you know it was definitely worth the worth the money and uh, jim davis is a cool dude man you know he's a type of guy he'll give you his card and if you need to call him you can call him and uh he he he's he's all over the country doing these teaching uh you know classes and uh no i'm glad i took the course so i'm saying to the young guys and the guys out there in the field um you know I'm not getting paid or nothing to, 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 to say any of this stuff. I'm just saying for me, if I like something and I learn something um, on the course, or if I, got, if I got a tool that I'm using and I like, you know, I'll, I'll give it a shout out and I'll say, you know, I think this is a good thing for us to do. And um, that course was definitely, um, definitely good. Definitely, uh, yeah, definitely good. So... Hopefully this video is not too long. I just wanted to, you know, put a little video together about that. I, I got that video coming up for, for my house. Um, I'll probably be releasing this video before that uh, that furnace replacement. I replaced the furnace in my house. It was 34 years old. You know, 
didn't look like it was any cracks in the heat exchanger. Maybe in the front a little bit, but nothing, nothing crazy. It was 34 years old. It was an old 70, 70 percent uh, gas furnace. I put in back with my father. Uh, my father helped me. I bought this house when I was 17, and I've been here ever since. I, I probably should have sold this thing and got a better house, but I've been here ever since I've been 17. So 34 years. Uh, and me and my father put that furnace in, so it was starting to get real noisy with the fan. The fan was really making all kinds of noise and racket, so needed to go. And I put a little 80% in there. Now, it's down in kind of in a little closed area, but I got doors that I leave open down there. And it's a very drafty house. This is an old house. Uh, it was built back in the 30s, so um, I don't got no problem with makeup air or anything like that down there. And uh, it's not an issue. I got, It's a drafty house, so... Even like the old, a lot of the windows upstairs here are so single pane, so you walk by them in the winter, you can feel, oh man, I could do something about that. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I changed the furnace, and I'll be doing a video on that, and uh, just wanted to, you know, because I know a lot of the guys that watch my videos are students, and there's a lot of teachers that, you know, use my videos for educational videos and some of the stuff that you know that we learn and we talk about and it helps the young guys out and that's why i do the videos for the young guys i got a daughter she's like 28 she never gotten she never got into the field she's a female you know um nothing against females but you know if i would have had a son i'm sure he would have you know followed in my footsteps but i guess the youtube is kind of like you know i try to help people out uh, you know with the videos my daughter don't want to do it. She's she's doing other stuff. So it's kind of the kind of kind of is what it is, guys. All right, I, you know I appreciate all the support, all my little subscribers. Uh, like, share, comment, and um, I appreciate all the support and you know all the all the the nice comments that you guys all leave me and uh, the phone calls and all that stuff that I get from people all over the country. I do definitely appreciate it and help keeps me going. Helps me to continue to do do what I do, and uh, more videos to come. I will keep posting videos, and I I just I I don't know why I do it, but I guess it's good part of me now, you know. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and stay subscribed. You don't like a mama, you don't like a, you don't like a mama, you don't like a. <laughs> she don't like a mama. Look at that. She don't like a. She don't like a. Whoa! Don't tip it. You peeing in there? No, no pee spots in the cage. We good now. Oh, there's the baby dog. Here yeah, she is. Isn't she a cute little doggy? Isn't she a cute doggy? Look at that red potato chip. <laughs> She's got a little that red potato chip. All right, push over. Come on. Push over. Here she is. Baby the dog. Baby the dog. My buddy, man. She's a lucker, mama. She's a lucker. She's a lucker, mama. She's a lucker. Alright, come on, push over. Come on, push over. Come on. Go home now. <laughs>